what's up guys, CB Modi here back with another video and today we're here with a software based video taking a look at a new program known as Wallpaper Engine. Now I say it's a new program but reality it's been out for quite some time, I just haven't exactly gotten around to making a video of it, but Wallpaper Engine is a super cool and super customizable way of changing your wallpapers and doing some really cool stuff with your system. So today we're going to take a look at exactly that, so with that being said let's jump over to our PC and take a look at what is going on. Right here, so we've gone ahead and jumped over here to my desktop PC. Now before we do jump into this, I do have three monitors in front of me and I'm only going to be capturing the center one. So kind of have to trust me that whatever we're doing here is going to apply to the other two monitors and also to have stuff off to the side. So yes, our triple monitor setup, it's going to be really hard to capture because well, there's three monitors and you guys only have one. So we're just going to have to roll with it and uh, see how we go. Now animated wallpapers aren't exactly something new when it comes to Windows. In fact, Windows Vista had something known as Dream Scenes, which were basically the ability to take a video and run that as your wallpaper. Unfortunately, it didn't take off and Windows kind of killed it out just like what they did with the uh, Windows screensaver. But at the end of the day, uh, wallpapers just like this aren't exactly new. However, Wallpaper Engine takes it to the next level with cool animations and stuff which we'll get to throughout this video. So with that being said, let's jump over to our desktop monitor right here and as we can see it's pretty blank, I mean I've got the desktop icons turned off and all that kind of stuff, but we do have some slight, anim ooh, some slight animation there. Now yes this program is still in sort of pre-access, early access beta form which we can find right here on Steam Wallpaper Engine. Type it in, it's $3.99, $4 basically, and it is probably one of the best $4 you will spend on a basic utility just like this guy. I really do like it, and it has a lot of flexibility here. So yes, they even do have a big warning, which I'll scroll down to here, that it is early access software, so we're not exactly going to be getting, well, the most polished ex experience. And as we just saw before, where we got a flicker of my existing wallpaper, and then it flicked back to this. Now, we'll get to why that happened in just a moment, uh, but yeah, do keep in mind that this guy is still a early access piece of software. But with that being said, once you download it, install it, and all those good things like that, we are then left with the program, which will launch up much like this guy. In fact, actually, it'll launch up in this particular window. Now, as we can see here, I have three different computer screens hooked up, giving me three options for three different wallpapers. Now, a lot of people do like to go ahead and select this little option here, which is stretch single wallpaper. Basically what this allows you to do is go ahead and stretch that one wallpaper across three different monitors. Now this works really well if you have uh, on the fly rendered wallpapers which we'll get to in just a moment, however if you have a video wallpaper things can get a little stretch and it doesn't really go the greatest. Now I've also too found having a uh, single stretched wallpaper also too brings up more crashes. So do keep that in mind that it can be a little bit less stable so for the purposes of this video we're just going to leave it on wallpaper per monitor. We're going to select which monitor we want. which in my case is going to be the center one because that's what we're screen capping today. We're going to go ahead and click change wallpaper and now we can get to customizing and there's a lot of things you can actually do. Now before starting this video because Australia's craptastic internet connection, I've gone ahead and downloaded some widgets so we don't have to necessarily wait uh, for them to go ahead and download. But this is the sort of main UI that we do get here with some controls over on the right hand side. So we'll just get to a quick little walkthrough of what the UI is all about. So first and foremost, we get the options here to go ahead and well actually select what we want. We can go to the Steam store and the workshop, but usually I like to just go ahead and uh, go over to the workshop option right here, which allows us to browse in real time through the application different wallpapers right here. Now we can hit filter like so and filter what category that we do want. So we've just got some relaxing kind of ones here. We'll just go ahead and close off that filter menu right there and we can see that we have quite a number of options here in just this one category. If we do want to get one, we just click on this and we go ahead and usually click subscribe, in this case I don't have this one, we hit download and it'll download to our systems and we are good to go. If you've already got it installed just like this one right here, it'll instantly apply it and you are ready to go. So that's what we can do here, we can also to search some stuff there if you do have a specific one in mind, you can go ahead and just search which wallpaper you do want to use. Again you can use the filters to go ahead and filter through which ones you want, there's a lot of stuff going on here. We can also to filter through resolution, so if you have a 4k screen or a 4k 
1440p screen and want something that's specific and will look good on your monitor, boom, punch it in there and you are good to go. So I really do like the feature that they've gone ahead and done that. And also too, you can specify things like video, web, application and so on and so forth. So that's the sort of, I guess, store kind of section. I don't think there's too many you can actually buy with real money, but you can go ahead and download there. So we'll jump back to install through this little install guy right here. There we go. Uh, and we'll go ahead and use that right here. And this is where we can select our wallpapers, which I did touch on just a moment ago. Now for me, I do like wallpapers that have very subtle motion. So for example, if we choose this guy and just bring that playback right down, we can see it has ever so slight motion that gives it, well, a little bit of a change over normal wallpapers. If we bring this guy back in here and just change that frame rate to max speed, we can see, sure, it looks pretty cool that we have a whole bunch of motion, but for me, I think it looks way better by just having that tiny little bit of motion like so. So it's kind of like just a little bit of subtleness going on here. Now, as I did mention before, there's a couple different ways of actually getting wallpapers. There's rendered on the fly, just like this guy, meaning that the computer's actually rendering this in real time, so it'll be scaled to your computer properly and it will be run properly. But there's also two video options. So for example, if we go to this one, the engine in slow motion, this guy is just a YouTube video that is being played back. And basically it is whatever is on that particular video, which means, the quality may not necessarily be as good as what you may expect from a on-the-fly rendered option. So sure, it's fairly decent, you can do all that kind of stuff, however, if we take it here and slow down the playback, it's going to get really choppy, as we do find out in just a moment, where the motion is basically just a 24p video that is now being slowed down. So as we can see here, not as exactly as smooth as what we would expect from an on-the-fly rendered video. And also too, there is another one which is application-based one, so if I select this guy here, the noise attack by uh, this user right here. Basically, this takes the uh, standard noise attack, which you can find on many websites out there, and puts it on your desktop wallpaper. Now, I've gone ahead and given it a couple minutes to go ahead and load up, and as we can see here, it's not exactly going to be the most best experience, as for some reason the web page hasn't really come down properly. You can't really do too much changing with this particular wallpaper, so for my particular setup, this kind of one isn't really going to be delivering me the best expense. But if you want to check this out more, I'll leave a link down below to this uh, little noise attack thing. I think they're really, really cool. But either way, uh, yeah, that some wallpapers don't exactly fully work. And then you got your more typical ones, just like this guy, which is again rendered on the fly, which we can also too change the uh, playback speed to really slow or really fast and give a really cool accent to the system. Now, once we've gone ahead and picked out a wallpaper that we really do like, we can also do some customization. So for me, we can see that this has got a nice cool uh, blue kind of background to it with some like red color going on here. And we can also to go ahead and change that in this little menu right here. So usually you'll get properties right here depending on what the wallpaper is and we can also choose our color. So let's say we wanna first just make a copy of that little uh, number here and we wanna make the background red, for example. We can go ahead and do that simply Click OK, and now the background itself is red. We can also to change our accent color of these little guys on the side right here. We'll just move this guy over. Do we put it right here? And we can see that we can change the accent color. So if we can make it green, it'll show up as green and look really, really interesting. But for today's video, we're just going to uh, leave it on what it was, which was uh, blue and also to that color there. Boom, click OK, and now it is customized here. Usually below that, we have a position slider so you can move things out. So depending on how your monitor is configured and how you want it actually set up, you can move it left to right. And if this little menu will move around, we can see we can just move it around. Now, this is extremely helpful if you have it stretched across multiple monitors. For example, if I was to set up a multi-monitor setup and I wanted this little doohickey guy in the middle of the screens, I could easily just position this right over and it'll be in the center of my monitor and look pretty good. But for now, we'll just leave it roughly around here. And then obviously we have the playback rate, which is what we've been playing with recently, which will change how fast this video act or this render actually plays back. So if we set it to 200, we can notice these dots down here move relatively quick. However, if we set it back to 10, which is where I like to set it at, it moves really, really slow. Now that's not only the only control that you get. For example, if we choose this one raining at night, there's actually a few other properties we get. For example, here, we get the weather where we get the weather option to be different weathers going around here, which is really nice to see. And also to some wallpapers are responsive. So we just move this guy out of the way. We can actually see that the uh, wallpaper shifts as my mouse move, giving it a cool little parallax effect over the top of it. Now, not everyone's going to like this and depending on your settings, it may not be enabled and that kind of stuff. But some wallpapers do give you that kind of cool parallax effect. Uh, that is really, really unique. I personally like it and uh, is pretty cool there. Now, on top of that, some are 
are even interactive. Now, I don't think I have too many that are actually interactive that I've downloaded, but uh, they are definitely cool there. And some are even audio reactive. So, for example, these dots one, uh, if we go ahead and just pull it up, are actually audio reactive. So, for example, if I play some audio back, uh, we can see that they start to jitter and move as the audio does play back. Now, you guys can't hear this audio. I don't think, um, but there is definitely audio playing in the background, which obviously make these dots move. And if I stop the audio, they stop moving around like so. Really, really cool and pretty customizable there. Now, if we also do wanted to jump into the settings of this guy, we can do quite a bit here. Now, depending on the power of your computer will depend on what settings you can run. Now, for me, I have a 12 thread setup with 32 gigs of RAM and two video cards. So for me, the processing impact isn't really going to be that big, but actually it's not that bad. Take a look at our settings with two times MSAA with high quality presets, resolution of full and also 230 FPS. FPS enabled, it's really not too bad. If we wanted to go full out, we can go 60 FPS, which looks way smoother if we hit OK here. Not too sure how it's going to show up in camera, but this water bottle effect now is so much more butter smooth, but will be slightly more resource intensive. So if we pull up our task manager guy right over here, and we do bring that performance tab right over here, we can see that we're getting about 26 to 27% utilization. However, we are doing a screen recording with OBS, meaning that on the fly transcoding of a 1080p signal is definitely being done here. However, without OBS going on here, I'm usually looking around 10 to 15% utilization up from about 6 to 7, which is my normal idle speed. So it's actually not bad on the CPU side. However, on the GPU side, if we do bring this guy over right here, we can see the GPU 2 usage has climbed just ever so slightly ever since we turned it up to 60 FPS, but really it's not that bad. Now, if you're worried about utilization during gaming sessions, that's also to another really cool feature about this application. What it automatically does is when it detects another application, whether it be a video editing application or a game, actually start to use CPU and GPU time, what it will do is pause the background so it won't be using any of that CPU or GPU cycle, giving all of the resources to your game or application of choice. So it's really awesome to see that when you need that processing power, the engine gives it back to you, no worries there. But jumping back to the application settings, if we do set this back to 30 FPS, because personally, I'm not too much worried about having a little bit of slightly less uh, performance there and all that kind of stuff, we can choose to do things like pro processing and reflections depending on what wallpapers you do have. Some of them will be affected by this, but if they're more of a video style, it's not going to be too much of an issue right there. Again, we can do our little changes here, so we can keep running when other applications are in focus or we can have it paused. So for example, if we pull up Chrome or another web browser on a lower spec computer, if we do have this set to pause, what it will do is just stop the wallpaper when we pull up another application. But when we hit that desktop, it will simply start playing and look really, really good. But for me, I'm just going to select keep running. We can jump over to the general application and go ahead and do some other things. For example, we can set default stuff, which is English for me, and we can go ahead and set our desktop icon opacity. So for example, if we have our icons enabled, uh, we can actually change how opaque and non-opaque they are. I really do like that feature for me though. I just have them disabled because it looks way better here. We can also do scroll down and check out our API. So we can do DirectX 9, DirectX 11, or OpenGL, depending on what video card you have, AMD or Nvidia. There's also two things we can video loading from disk or we can load it into our memory If you do have a whole ton of RAM, you can just load that video into that RAM really easy there We can also do have videos on loops or syncs and that kind of stuff really awesome Then overall, there's just a lot of uh, customization that we can do with the actual software itself And once we close it off there, we can continue just to choose whatever wallpapers we do want Whether we have nice slow motion ones like this or we could go ahead and get some cool little dots or be flying around with different sizes that kind of stuff Kind of stuff and uh, look really really interesting but when it comes down to it personally I do like these lower motion ones and I really do like this kind of a uh, retro style one as the program has named it. it's got ever so slight motion down here which looks really good you could probably speed it up just a little bit more for a bit more motion going on here but I have to say these low motion ones really do look on point now a couple things that I do want to keep you guys in the loop about is when it comes to existing wallpapers if you have a wallpaper slideshow already you will have the error where it comes through ever so slightly. So at the start of this video, you may have noticed where that wallpaper showed up for a few seconds and then went away. That is just because my desktop wallpapers are already configured and this guy's just sitting over the top. So again, if you have a slideshow within Windows, I do recommend you disable it. Otherwise you'll get those weird wallpapers coming 
through time to time. Also too, lower end computers will start to chug a little bit with these particular wallpapers, especially those that are rendered on the fly. So if you have a low end computer, whether you're running, you know, four gigs of RAM, a single core, or maybe even just a dual core, you may want to not actually look into this option as it may eat up too many resources for you. Laptops on battery also too will see a battery life hit. I haven't necessarily checked it out, but let me know down in that comment section whether you want me to go ahead and actually check out uh, what kind of battery life performance this guy actually takes in terms of an impact. So I do keep in mind battery life and lower end computers will definitely be affected. But if you have a desktop PC with decent power behind it, it is a really cool engine to be running. But with that being said, that's about it for wallpaper engine. Definitely a really cool piece of software and definitely something I recommend a lot of you guys actually check out. It retails for about $4, however on Steam sales I've seen it go for like 99 cents. So if you are willing to hold out just a little bit, we do have the end of year sales and holiday sales coming up, so I wouldn't be surprised if you could snag it for like a dollar or so. But with that being said, that's about it for Wallpaper Engine. So there we go, that was Wallpaper Engine, a really nice way to customise your wallpaper and desktop experience and do some really neat stuff. For me personally, again, I do prefer that small amount of movement to give a really subtle accent to the computer, but if you are more into the full screen video type of experience, definitely, absolutely go for it. But with that being said, guys, find the link to Wallpaper Engine and everything else that I did talk about in this video, again, down in the description box. If you want to let me know what your favourite wallpaper is, let me know down in that comment sections. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.